SOLIDWORKS is a mechanical design automation program that takes advantage of Microsoft Windows' graphical user interface. It allows designers to quickly sketch out ideas, experiment with features and dimensions, and produce models and detailed drawings. This introductory lesson discusses some basic concepts and terminology used in SOLIDWORKS and will help you become familiar with commonly used functions. Many functions in SOLIDWORKS will already be familiar to you, since they come straight from Windows. Things like being able to resize a window, use keyboard shortcuts, and drag and drop files. We'll start out by dragging this assembly file of a sink into SOLIDWORKS to open it up. SOLIDWORKS uses a 3D design approach. As you design a part from the, from the initial sketch to the final model, you create a 3D entity. Using this 3D entity, you can create 2D drawings or combine several components into a 3D assembly. You can see your designed model in the right side of the screen, which is called the graphics area. The left side of the screen can display the Feature Manager Design Tree, the Property Manager, or the Configuration Manager, as well as many other third-party add-ins. The view of the model in the Graphics window can be controlled using the middle mouse button. You can rotate the model by holding down the middle mouse button and moving the mouse, zoom in and out by rolling the wheel, and moving the model side to side by holding the Control key and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. The left click mouse button is used to select commands from the toolbar as well as items in the graphics area. It is quite easy to select what you want since there is a lot of feedback. The item you hover over is outlined in orange, and the pointer displays the type of entity you are hovering over. If you hover over a vertex, you will see a small circle. If you hover over an edge, you will see a line, and if you hover over a face, you will see a square. Once you have selected an item, it will turn blue, allowing you to easily pick out what you have selected. The right mouse button offers a context-sensitive menu of commands, depending on what type of item you currently have selected. At the top of the context-sensitive menu is a list of commonly used commands for the selected item. For example, when right-clicking on a flat surface, one option you are given is to start a sketch. These commands are also available from the customizable toolbar at the top of the screen, or from the drop-down menus. One of the greatest things about SOLIDWORKS is that it is component-based meaning that any change made in a part will be reflected in any drawing or assembly containing that part. This will also work in the opposite direction. Changing a part in an assembly or in a drawing will make the same changes in the original part file. If we add a drain hole to the sink in the assembly and then save it, we will find the same hole can now be found in the part. Now before we start to model in SOLIDWORKS, it is important to understand some of the terminology. The origin is the 0, 0, 0 point of your model. It is useful for anchoring your model in space. A plane is flat construction geometry. Planes have several uses, including a drawing basis for 2D sketches, and being used as a feature in features such as cuts. An axis is a line is a straight line used to create model geometry or patterns. There are many ways to create an axis, such as the intersection of two planes or the center line of a cylinder. A face is a boundary that defines the shape of a model or surface. It can be as simple as a flat circle, or it can be very complex, like a lofted surface. An edge is the location where two faces or surfaces meet, and a vertex is the point where two lines intersect. Now that we have defined some of the basic terminology for SOLIDWORKS, we can start with a sketch. Every part in SOLIDWORKS begins with a sketch, a 2D profile or cross-section which can be made into a 3D solid using several means, such as extruding, revolving, or sweeping. There are several ways to create a sketch, as we saw earlier. I'm just going to select the, use the sketch button and then select the top plane, which is the plane we want to sketch on. Using lines and arcs, you can sketch out almost any shape that you want for your cross-section. We'll start with a simple example of two lines and two arcs. Sketches are controlled by dimensions and relations. Some relations are created automatically depending on how you draw your sketch, such as the tangent and horizontal relationships which were automatically added to our sketch. Now let's center the sketch on the origin. We can do this by drawing a center line between the two arc centers and then applying a midpoint relationship between this line and the origin. 
Dimensions can be added which will control lengths, distances, or radii. I'll add a 100mm dimension to control the length of the lines and a 20mm dimension on the radius of the arcs. There are two types of dimensions, driving dimensions and driven dimensions. Driving dimensions actually control the model, whereas driven dimensions are for reference only and are controlled by other dimensions or relations. As you can see, the sketch has now turned from, black, from blue to black. This means that the sketch is fully defined. A sketch should usually be fully defined before it is used to create a feature, so that it doesn't change unexpectedly later on. A sketch can become overdefined if there are redundant dimensions or relations. For example, if I had a dimension between these two lines. When a sketch is overdefined, SolidWorks will prompt you to fix the problems before continuing and will give you suggested solutions. In this case, I can make the distance dimension into a reference dimension. Now that we have a sketch, we can move on to making a feature. The simplest feature is an extrusion, which makes a 3D prism using a sketch as a cross-section. We will select our sketch and choose the extrusion tool. Once we start our extrusion, we will see a dynamic preview. By using the drag handle, you can resize the component or use the ruler to size it. You can also input numerical values for the length of extrusion in the property menu. Another common feature, which can produce more complicated shapes, is the sweep feature. It sweeps a profile along a path. There is already a profile and a path available to us in this part, so we will first select the profile which we want to be the cross section, and then we will select a path that the sweep will follow. After adding a few more features to the faucet, we may want to round off the sharp edges. This is done with the fillet tool. Fillets are applied features. Since they do not require a sketch, it is as simple as choosing an edge and specifying a radius. Now that we've completed the part, we can combine it with other parts in an assembly. A new assembly can be created separately, or you can choose to make an assembly from a part in the file menu. For this faucet, we will need to have some control handles. There are already available handles, so we can just drag and drop them into the assembly. In order to make them sit on the base, we can apply a coincident mate between the bottom of the handle and the top of the faucet base. This constricts the handle to movement along one plane. Next, a concentric mate is applied between the cylindrical faces of the handle and the supply pipes for the faucet. We can then control drag the faucet to make another copy of it for the other side. Once these mates are added, it is possible to visualize how the assembly will move when assembled. It is even possible to analyze the assembly for interference and collisions during movement. It is useful to make smaller assemblies, such as this faucet even if they will be added to larger assemblies. This way, you can work on smaller section of the assembly without having to open the entire large assembly. In the sink assembly, the faucet has been added as a smaller subassembly. Now that we've created our assembly, we can make it into a drawing that we can send to manufacturing. It is very easy to create a drawing. First, you start a drawing by selecting Make Drawing from Assembly in the file menu. Then you select a size for your sheet. As you can see, the view palette has already opened and you can drag the view you want into the graphics area and position it. Now SolidWorks automatically starts a projected view. You can position a projected view where you want it and then click to place it. You can add as many views as you would like in this way. You can also change how a view is displayed. You can choose to show hidden lines or even make a shaded view. When making a drawing of an assembly, you can also show an exploded view. You just go to our right-click menu, click on Properties, and then check the checkbox Show an Exploded View. We can now very easily add a bill of materials for our drawing. We just need to select a view to base the bill of materials on, and then choose where we want to place it. SolidWorks will look into the assembly files and find information on all the parts used. It will even take properties from the parts, such as the description or material. 
and it will automatically fill in the required fields. Now that you've seen the SOLIDWORKS interface and learned a bit about what SOLIDWORKS can do, you're ready to start learning how to best use the SOLIDWORKS functions. The first course that every new SOLIDWORKS user should take is SOLIDWORKS Essentials, which will teach the basics of 3D modeling. After the Essentials course, there are many other courses available in the form of both instructor-led courses or web courses. To see a list of all the courses offered by Javelin or to register for a course, please visit our website www.javelin-tech.com or follow these links to our instructor-led training or web training.